Yo, what's up, y'all? We're here for another episode of Fatherhood Fraternity. We want to do a quick, abbreviated episode due to technical difficulties. Yeah. But believe me, we are in here and we're ready to um, talk to you all. It's DJ Daryl, a.k.a. your favorite to have with me. Norm Strick. What's going on, everybody? This is Jeremiah. Live from the barbershop, we have 417 Agler Road, Different Strokes Barber Studio. If you need a fade... Come get one. I need one. I'm struggling. We both yeah, right we now. We got Jay Z. <laughs> I got. I got like Jay Z doing get an album hey, coming. Free, I got baby, one yeah. too. Yeah, it's all right. But um, yeah, man, we we was ready to give y'all a full hour episode, but you know, technical difficulties just didn't didn't make that happen. But we still got to get together as brothers and as fathers, and I definitely want to encourage fathers and brothers to just sit and talk without the mic because you need it. Definitely. So we gonna just um at least have y'all here for. Some questions of the day. Question. Question. I'm going to take it from here, Daryl. Yep. This is the question. For all you married brothers and even for you married sisters, platonic relationships, how does it work if I'm married to my wife and I have a best friend that I grew up with and she knows me inside out like a book? If you've ever seen the movie Brown Sugar or if you've ever seen the movie Love and Basketball, yep. those is like Brown Sugar in particular because they grew up together, they knew each other, they loved hip hop and they had that as a common denominator and then they grow up and become adults and they go off into the dating world only to figure out later in life that my best friend is the woman that I love. You know what I'm saying? And so there was a conversation in the barbershop I'm not going to disclose any names but a brother said that he has many female friends Whereas I'm saying I don't have any female friends. I can't go nowhere and it's just me and a woman riding the car. That's not that's awkward, off, but I feel off, the tension. Yeah. I feel the tension because I know the type of man that I am. I'm going to start getting flirtatious, charismatic. I'm going to get in Mac mode. I'm going to get smooth. I'm going to start opening up the door. I got the check. Got I'm, a be, I'm, a, I'm a gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would do that to the extreme. And... It's hard for me to have an existing relationship with a woman and not want to take over as the man in the relationship. And so I don't know how to play the backseat or play the, the, the friend in the, in, the, in the relationship. So basically my question is, I don't want to say, is there a such thing as a platonic relationship? Because I know that there is for brothers with self-control. But how does a platonic relationship work? That's a question that I have for myself. How does it work? How do you do that? I'll talk. I'll talk on it. So the thing is, I think you have to know yourself first, and that will determine your answer. Mm. Because if you know that you can't do it without you doing it for real, like the the right way, you shouldn't do it. So it's no blanket answer. You can't be like, oh yeah, you should have. You should be able to have a, a female best friend. You might not. You might not be the one who should have a female best friend because you know your history. Not saying you as personal, but you, the listener, know your history. You know how you talk to people. You know how you get down when you're drunk. You know how you get down when you are high or or when you're feeling down. You know when you have those open outlets if you're going to use them. So maybe you should know that you shouldn't do that. Like, I know that I'm going to speak in personal. Um, I've always had a lot of female friends and I always had people around. And I just use it as an excuse. Like, I'm the DJ. I'm your girl's favorite DJ. Like, that's, they can hear it. Don't worry about it. It's like, that was always, don't worry about it. Um, that was always my thing. Like, it's your girl's favorite DJ. I'm supposed to have a girl's rhyming. That's, that's part of me. But that's not once you change. I can't believe you're still getting away with that title. I don't. I don't. It's, my, it's, my title it's your is, favorite is your favorite. Yeah, it's your favorite. It's just your favorite. Yeah. So it's not. Somebody tried to steal it. I could title, be your girl. girl's favorite barber. Hey. I have to get beat up. <laughs> Yeah, so like when you when you, when you use that as your identity and you let that control you, then you really can't be married with it. Because I would talk to these girls who I was their favorite as if they was like my booze, like they was like my, my chicks. Yep. And I didn't know how to talk to them just in a regular conversation without it being, hey, boo, smiley face, emoji, emoji type mm-hmm. thing. Because for... 32, 33 years I've been single. I haven't been married for That's what I'm used to. I'm used to being able to talk to a woman however I want to without worrying about how I looked in a screenshot in a group chat or to my wife. So I've never had to worry about that. So I know that once I came into this relationship, before I even before I even got married, I had a best friend. That was I had two best friends that I would call my 
I don't call him that now because my wife has taken that place. Right. That was something that she brought up to me first, though, because I would have I had one listed as my best friend in, in my phone, and she just didn't feel you know comfortable with that. If we're going to go to the next step, then should not be your best friend, should not be your confidant, should not be the one that you speak to. And I love that the fact that she brought it to you yeah. right? because it sounds territorial, but it definitely is. Like there should be no woman yeah. above. Are we? Are we in the territory together? You feel like me? That's are. what it is. Yeah. And the, I feel the same way. There should be no man above me. And that's fair. That's a fair proclamation. I want to be the number one man in my wife's life. I don't want her to have no other brother that she can call when she's in need or if she um, needs advice. Let me be your advisor. Let me be all of those things. You know what I'm saying? That's the hard part, though, where I don't want to say hard part. Let me just say my wife has a best friend that she's known for years. But there's like there's not a talk every single day. They're not on the phone chit-chatting, hee-hee, ha-ha. Right. You know what I mean? I met him. He's a cool dude. You know what I mean? It's, it's nothing there. But if there was more of that conversation, more text messages with this person, I feel uncomfortable. Did, did, you said you met him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do you know that he doesn't have a feeling towards your wife? And does that matter? So, for me, I don't know. But as a man, any other female, whether it be a friend, best friend or not, you have some type of attraction or had some type of attraction. I believe that. Like, I have female friends. I had a lot of female friends, too, like actual friends that I grew up with that I know. But at the same time, I had some type of attraction to them. That's the only reason why we were friends. I ain't friends with nobody just to be like, hey, you're, you know, you're cool. It's, hey, she look good. She's cool. We hang out. And it's like, well, this not going to work. Maybe we can still be friends. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't know his intentions, but I know as a man, if my wife, my wife is pretty. I know he's probably looking at her like, damn, she look nice. You know what I mean? She look good. Because I know that I'll be thinking about it when I see her. So I know another dude is thinking about it. But the platonic friends thing is, for me, I can't have any. Like, I had to shut down all that. I don't have any female friends. I still hit up just like, hey, you know, what's going on? How you been? Every once in a while, I may see a post on Instagram. Hey, you know, you look nice or something like that. It's nothing crazy. But I'm not on the phone. We're not texting. That had to get shut down. It's, I feel like that's a breeding ground for disaster. Yes. I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you one story. I call my guy. He says, yeah, I'm at the crib. Come through. I jump in the car. I shoot through. I show up. Knock on the front door. His wife answers the door. I say, yeah, is my friend here. She says, he stepped out. I think he went to the speedway. He should be back in like 10 minutes. Come on in. I say, no. nah, <laughs> I'm going to go sit in the car. Matter of fact, I'm going to shoot to the to the store and grab something. I got a thing I got to do. Long story short, I separate myself from that situation. Right. Because... Because I know that for me, maybe not even for her, for me, I felt uncomfortable in that situation. I didn't want for my friend to come home and it look like something. Right. I didn't want to just be finishing with a good joke and she laughing and he walk in. I'm like, oh, hey, man. Right. You know, I didn't want none of that. I don't come like in, that. Have feel. a seat. Right. Yeah. She might be at home comfortable. You know, at home they ain't wearing. You, you don't know, mean nothing. It's you just, it's mean? just comfort yeah. for me. Uh. I didn't want to be in that situation, so I left. Sat in the car for a minute, called him up. He was like, man, I'm turning on the corner. So I waited for him to pull up, and then we both walked into the crib at the same time. That's respectfully. Respectfully, yeah. right. But that's me as 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 a man. Like, I'm that type of man. I don't want to be alone with anybody's wife. Right. If I am, I'm talking about you the whole time. Like, man, no, man, that's yeah. a good brother right there. That's a good <laughs> hey, good brother so right there. So my thing know? is, though, me and my wife going to have beef because why the hell you let another dude in the house? I don't care who he is. I ain't home. Why you let him in the house? And my mom gave me something when, when I was a kid, and I didn't understand it. I thought she was just being mean. Now I understand it as a parent and definitely as a husband. But I used to have friends over all the time right after school. Everybody come over my house. We just in the yard playing. And then my mom would come home, and it would always be like an awkward tension. My mom would come home. I could tell that she ain't on it. She don't feel like playing with no kids. She want to come home. She was in the military, so she want to kick her boots off chill so she would always tell me I don't want nobody in my house before I get there your friends can come over after I get home when I'm home you can have whoever want to come but when I get home from work I don't I want to come home to a peaceful house right and now I understand that it's 
a level of respect that has to happen. My mom shouldn't be able to come home and there's three or four kids in the house, in the kitchen, and then she got to find her place. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I felt when I went over my guys. I don't want to be over there already and then he comes home and then have to get acclimated to the climate of the house. Just like, yeah, all right, now he has to adjust to his own yeah. house. You got to right. stand up real right. quick and readjust <laughs> well, yourself. Right. You can't be too comfortable. Hey, so you know, you, what up, bro? Welcome. He, he you ever watch your so career? Yeah, you ever, yeah, you ever, I was just going to say that. You ever watch Archie Bunker? Yeah. When he come home and somebody's in his chair, nah, nah. get out of my chair. Right. Like, I don't want to come home and be in your space. So let me not be in your space. And that's just how I feel in the platonic relationship. My f- best friend is my wife's space. Right. You know? So what's the verdict? Are we going to say the yes or no to platonic friends? Is it? I think it's up to the individual. It's up to the couple. I would say it's up to me, the couple. Platonic relationships don't work. My wife don't have no high school homeboys that she can call on in a time of need. I'm that guy. And I don't want from. I don't want to have anybody that I can call on other than my wife. My wife needs to be everything. And that's for me. I, I can't have any platonic female friends. I don't want that space. But I can still be flirty. I can still be, still be charismatic. I crack a couple jokes. I don't need a girl chuckling, you know, all on me like, ah, you know, you look so nice. I don't need that right now. Thank you for telling me I look nice, but I, I don't I need nice. that space. Yeah, I don't need that space. <laughs> I know I look good. But the problem is sometimes if you don't hear that at home every once in a while, that's when you start searching for mm-hmm. that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's, that's what the I'm problem. Saying. That's yeah. when you need another relation that's a different relationship than right. what you should be having right so I have that's a story emotional cheating yeah. people do that yeah. people cheat physically and then people cheat emotionally a woman to be like I can't talk to my husband he's not understanding he's not sensitive so let me talk to James the work husband cause James yeah, yeah the, the work husband but at, at work he, right. he understands he brings it. me food he knows what I like he feels <laughs> to my problem and that's nah, a problem nah, we ain't having that that's an issue yeah. well my wife she has male friends not like guys that she talked to all the time but like she's in this book club and one of her friends she went to college with not a guy she ever talked to or messed with but just a friend that she knew head of the book club she talks to him through that you know what I mean but it's not just something like hey let's go hang out when I get in town me and you go out like that I'm not having that the only way you're going out with another dude he better be with his wife I got a problem I'll be in the book club what, <laughs> shit. Where, what chapter we on right, what, 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 what page we on so, so kind of going along <clears throat> excuse me with that what if there's a group, like there's a group friends, and there happens to be somebody of the opposite sex in that group of friends that came up together? Like, does that make it an issue? So explain. I so. say, like, your girl got a group of friends that she's cool with, and there's a Let's nigger or two in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, th- how much are they hanging nah, out? Nah, I'm in the group. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> hey. I'm Johnny Gill. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm in the group. I'm in the group too. Yeah. Like, what if they just like have like space parties and and I don't have that problem because my wife's friends are out of town. But so I don't have that. She's here, here now, right? Hypothetically, she has five people from Ohio State that she was cool with, and they hanging and, out and they kicking it on a Friday night. And, and she wants you to watch. The, hey, I'm the new she wants you to I'm watch. New member. She wants you to watch your son. My sister gonna watch my son. I'm going with you. <laughs> we ain't having. That. I ain't having that. I'm and maybe I'm wrong, but jealous. Is the feeling that I feel? I, you going out with another brother? And not you know what I'm saying? See, I'm jealous. I'm different because I don't really care if it's a group setting. And if I know the dude and we've been in, like introduced, and I don't have to be best friends. I don't have to. Have, I mean, there has to be. I have to feel a, a type of respect, rapport right. with this person. And I, and hopefully he has somebody else that he's with or gay. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I wouldn't even go that far. But, but I'm just saying, like, it's just something where I would have to. You can feel when something's like not not right. What? You want to be around that group a couple times before you let them just venture off and just be cool. Exactly. It can't be just like a unknown nigga. You got you got to get in the mix. <laughs> yeah, we a saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Once I hang out with y'all a couple times, okay. I gauge it and yeah, be like, right. all right, y'all, you can go you can off go by with yourself. Them. I'm not but going. I got to be a part of it. I have to be a part of that. Is this only because of marriage, or is this period in relationships? Because we have people who are not married who listen. We have people who are. Wanting to possibly be married and who are probably listening to us to figure out what to expect, man. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to the to the point, man, because this is a shortened episode. Right. Me and Norm had an excellent conversation off air, and I believe that marriage is one of those institutions where it's that real. Yeah. You're dealing with self. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with somebody else's self. Then you're dealing with the two of y'all coming together. You're dealing with family and extended family 
You're dealing with all of this coming together for one union. Add kids in that, too. On top of having right. children and growing as a family. And it's just too many dynamics there. And you have to. You have to be in control of your relationship. You are, you go, you are going to go through the fire. You are going to go through turbulence and tough times. Guaranteed. There is nobody that I know that is successfully married that has not had problems. Problems. And so what I'm saying is, as a husband, I want to be able to work through those problems with my wife. If she works through her problems with somebody else, I'm going to feel, personally, as a failure to my relationship. I have a problem with that. Just like if I go to church and somebody else is praying over my wife, she goes see the deacon for prayer. Right. I need to step up as the head of the household and be able to pray for my wife. My wife needs to come to me for prayer. That's she can go me. to the preacher? Hmm? She can't go to the preacher for prayer? But that's what I'm saying. In the household, I need to be the preacher of the household. Okay. You need to what be happens the, when the it first defense. Right. You need to be the first. You know? That's what we are. And what husbands, happens when it ain't Sunday? Yeah. It's right. Tuesday. Right. As husbands, we are the head of the household because that's our role. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just being a dose advocate for the people. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's why I wanted to answer that. And so in a situation like a platonic relationship, I feel like, your best friend should be me. Yes. I should be your best friend. I do agree with that. Yeah. And not the corny analogy of best friend. I'm talking about like, like come to if me, there's talk somebody to me. that I, I'm your first lifeline. Right. I need help. Let me call Jay. And, and that's how it is for me because the first person I want to talk to or text or call is my wife. Exactly. Like, you want to share that news. Yeah. Whatever. Everything. The, like, oh, yo. Did you? Literally, bro, she's the first yeah, one that yeah. knows about everything. Yeah. And I remember I have a story, too, about, like, just friendships in general. When we first got together, um, I had a friend that lived in Atlanta. And it was like, I was still trying to figure her out, and we were trying to figure each other out. But I had another friend in Atlanta that I was like, well, maybe I might talk to her, too. When exactly. I When I tell you my wife shut that down, this is what I knew was real. She was in my apartment. I came home from work. She came up to visit. This is when she moved back home. And uh, she came in town, came to visit. I came home from work. She had just had the, the, the mad face. Just to talk about just legs crossed. Oh, yeah. Just like, what's wrong with you? Everything all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Mm. And then it was like, all right, well, I'm going to you know, go and just chill, come back. Uh, who was X, Y, and Z? I'm like, oh, that's my friend. You, you, know? you, you I ain't introduced you to X, Y, and Z. That's just my friend. She's like, well, it looks like y'all having more than a friend conversation based off of what I see. Mm. So it was one of those, look, uh, I'm not playing these games. I've been through this before. She was like, either you stop this or I'm going to have to leave. I, this, I respect that. This is when we first 100%. started talking. That's why I knew it was real. I said, you know what? I'm with you, baby girl. Hey, right. sorry. I got to delete you off of Twitter, Instagram, and your phone number. Have a nice life. I XYZ, had boom. the hey. same exact <laughs> situation, <laughs> same ending, even the same city. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I, I believe. there. Yeah. 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 And that's, and that's, that's what changed what, the game for that's me. That's what changed it for me, and that's what made me realize that this is the one. Somebody who's willing to to confront a situation, even if we're not married, even though we're just talking. If you're real enough to say something now, when it gets tough, when it gets hard, you'll be real enough to say something now. Yep. Right. So, and it's not a fence for me. It's, 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 a, it's a straight up learning process. I'm learning myself on how to deal and talk with other people, which will allow me to have the freedom to have the friendships that I would need for whatever reason. Or not, or I need, or I know that I shouldn't be talking to these people because I know that I can't deal with these people in this manner. Those are the two things you got to think about. And also, are you giving enough to your spouse to make them not need to hear uh, about to say, enough say from the other person right. to be to feel full and complete? Are you really the best friend? Are, are right. you the listener? Are no. you the the one who gives them the advice? Are you the, the one who pumps them up and encourages them Motivates and, them and straightens things. them out and cusses them out every now and then praise, in the right way? Praise for, praise for them and, and touches them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The right way. Those things, yeah. when they're missing, are easily found within a platonic relationship, and that's when it gets bad. So you have to also be that man mm -hmm. that fulfills... As much as possible, because you know we can't do everything. We're not perfect, but we have to be able to notice when we're lacking and where we're lacking, because that becomes another man's like man. straight Listen, in. Man. That's the time to dive in. Yeah. You know so, man. fellas, are we all in agreement? Uh, fatherhood fraternity, platonic relationships. We get them thumbs down. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have I'm, the sideways. Hey, I'm gonna have sideways. the sideways. Listen, yeah. because I, I, with growth, <laughs> I've, I've been able to. With growth, I've been able to do that. Say that. But I like, know I, it wasn't. It hasn't always been that way for me. Because I know that that transition into today yeah. 
was a while. I have a level of immaturity. I'm not trying to see my wife talking, laughing. You so crazy right. with nobody but me. Right. I don't really have a jealous streak, I, whether that's I, good I, or bad. I, do. I don't. I don't Did have. You have brothers and sisters, man. I have a half sister, but right. I don't have a. I don't really have a jealous streak. See, it's, it's four Six. four kids in the house when I was growing up, but it was just me, man. And I'm like very, very jealous. My feelings get hurt too. If you got something and I ain't got it, my feelings are crushed. We're separated too because my the twins are five years younger and my older sister's seven years older. So I almost had my own childhood for myself even yeah. though we was in the house together i was able to have my own for a long time mm. but plutonic friends for me i mean with rick james said which had more hands i could i get that four <laughs> thumbs down I, I can't i mean just me personally i feel you it just it doesn't work for me because i know how i am with women and i don't even want to put myself in a situation my answer where could change in yeah, the week i mean because because it, it could be one of them things like your best friend called you as a female Oh, Mike broke my heart. You know, I just need somebody to talk to. Can we go out? Sure, we can go out. And then it turns into, you know, you're such a great guy. You're so, so amazing. Like, what do you do with, yeah. with, with a female? You, you go I don't out, know. hang out? Yeah. She invites you over to eat? You and know the, what I'm saying? And, well, the thing is, too, if you're not giving your wife that security and letting them know everything that's going on with this platonic friend, air quotations, you know what I mean? That's, that's not going to help at all your relationship. You know I mean, you have to let them know, or hey, bring her with you. Listen, we gonna go to here. Yeah. Come on, come, come with friend. us. Yeah. She gotta feel comfortable with you being around that person. She has to feel no type of way. Yeah. Just like you were saying about the group setting. Yeah, I gotta. You, look. you check them out first. It's gotta be that. And it yeah. has to be a, a, a proper introduction. And as much as we like to play dumb, your wife is gonna sniff anybody Man, out who's what? not good for you, male Ooh. or female. Real, Say male that. or female. She's gonna sniff them out, and you need that hound dog to be. Yes. Around the people that you're around, because she's like, you know what? I really like Jay. Yeah. Like, I know that he's a good, he's a good dude. That's, good a good point. that's, a, that's an excellent point, dude. Because when me and my wife first got together, she cut, and I didn't notice. I'm saying she cut. She cut about four of my partners. Oh yeah, like sure. nah, he don't he don't get to he come over. Yeah, I had a friend. I'm not gonna say his name either. But we, <laughs> me and my wife, was in our first apartment. My friend asked me, "Can he spend the night? Spend the night?" And like a damn fool, I'm like, yeah, you can sleep downstairs, you know what I mean? Just keep it quiet, you know what I mean? It's cool. My friend spends the night, invites a lady friend over, and, <laughs> and gets busy, and getting busy in my house. Hey, nope. So my wife is like, I told you. And now That's I get the, the one confirmation. I told you. So I got I have to cut my friend off. Because my wife told me, and she was 100 percent correct. He he's we're married. Well, at the time we was engaged, and he's not thinking like that. He's a single dog. He's out here running, and she's like, "You just can't." It's eventually either it's going to affect you or it's going to affect me. But he's not good for us, man. I'm, and I know exactly what she meant. Now, in hindsight, right. it's like nah, because now I see what a brother is. It's like yeah. <laughs> so we we dog. talked about that too about us learning in hindsight, and that's something. A side note, which is, man, women are right. I said this before on like Facebook. I said women are right. I said ninety five percent of the time, and I'm almost willing to go maybe a little bit higher. Black, than black women, black women, yes. black women. Let me right. let me specify. Black women, they know, man. Like my wife, she knows, and it took me a while to really start listening. But now, man, my ears are open. And you talk about being a, a bloodhound. My wife sniffs stuff out. She oh, knows. Man. Like, even something small for Thanksgiving. Um, she's like, you know, I got this macaroni. I said, one box. Ain't going to be enough. We're going to have nine people in the house. Like, we should get another box. She's like, I mean, it's a box and a half. We should be good. I'm like, ah, let's get one more box. We had so much macaroni and cheese left. Macaroni. Too much damn macaroni and cheese. I don't even want macaroni and cheese for a while. Yeah. Because I didn't listen. Listen to black women. Listen to black women. They listen know. Listen. It's a, it's a gut feeling. Whatever they have, it's something special that black women have. And black men, if you're married or unmarried, you listen to us, listen to your woman. They know. And this almost changes the platonic subject to be in friendships, period. Because the male friends are just as bad as the female friends because you got niggas that you just only go drink with right. and that you only, only go to the find club, these yeah. hoes with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. That's when you got to cut them off just as quick as you got to cut, cut off those women. Right. So, not even just platonic. It's about your friendships. It's because friendships in general. You got to yeah. change and switch up all of them. If you're trying to be successfully married, you definitely do. Exactly. There's a lot of fat that you got to trim. Man. Yeah. You can't have too many uh, 
carry ons. No. Nah. <laughs> it takes <laughs> and it sometimes it yeah. takes some time to realize that, man. And it, it does. It, it, it takes some struggle where you realize like, damn, all right, this is not a game no more. Once you get to the part of, you know, your woman really being frustrated or just shutting down, stuff like that, you gotta realize like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and, and stop this. As a mature man now, I realize I should have cut stuff off a long time ago. True. People so, off a long time ago. In closing, let's just have us say, think about for the next two weeks that we're away from each other or with our families or if you're listening, whatever you are in position, think about where you can trim the fat. Think about where your spouse is telling you to, to mm, this might not be it. Just be more aware of those things. Uh, growth is what I think of when you say that. Like, where can you grow? And at times, just like if you uh, are grooming a plant, you snip some of them, uh, some of them dead go. leaves off so that your plant can grow. Yep. And I think in our lives, some of your hangers on are dead leaves, and they only going to weigh you down. They only going to eat away when you can just clip them off and continue to grow. And you might not even know it, but mentally it messes you up. Like, it's friends that I know I should have been separating myself from. Not even physically, but just even through whatever type of communication you have that's not helping you grow not helping you mature spiritually that's the number one thing if you don't have any friends that try to put in that godly or that diss up in you and you're looking at all the negative things that's going to affect you which is going to affect your relationship and the whole thing around you that's, that's it fact. appreciate y'all checking in on our, our abbreviated show but I know we wasn't lacking on content we definitely went straight to it alright y'all circles. <laughs> till next time y'all <laughs>